It has been a real joy to make this for my grandchildren. When they're here and we've had dinner or whatever and there's always a, a one loaf left for somebody to take home and they they kind of fight over who's going to get the biggest piece to take, take home. <laughs> of course, that makes me feel good because it's something I can do for them. She said, I'm the only one that she's known that she's given the starter to that has kept it going these 40-something years. It was 100 years old when she gave it to me. Her neighbor had given it to her and she'd make bread and it tasted so good and I wanted to be able to do it. So she just gave me a starter and told me what to do. I actually took it on vacation with me when we were in our RV and made bread uh, on the, in the RV. <laughs> My grandkids were the ones who named it Mimi Bread because they, when they started coming over here when they were just very small, I'd make bread. And they started eating it and they, they adored it and they put uh, liquid butter on there and, and uh, they called that Mimi Butter because they didn't have liquid butter at their house. <laughs> so we had, uh, we had a lot of fun with it and I let them help me make it sometimes. I just hope that they'll be able to take it and keep it alive and enjoy it. To start the bread, I put a cup of uh, potato water, water off of two potatoes that I've cooked. Then I put a cup of uh, flour and a cup of sugar, and then the starter. And I put it in a big bowl, Then we leave it in the oven uh, with just the light on with, and the door standing open a little bit. So that it's in there. This right here, I don't seal it because I, I want the air to circulate some in there. It goes from uh, that, that night at about nine o'clock before I go to bed, I fix it into bread. And I add eight, eight cups of uh, flour. I put in uh, level tablespoon of salt and a half a cup of sugar and then you put the where you can have some air circulation and set it back in the oven the next morning i get up and I, I take it out of the oven and it's usually almost as full as that fix -it bowl is and i get a little flour on my hands and all and i push it down all the way around and then I knead it and when I had my arm broken I put it into uh, into the sink and I did this way and, and, and then I'd move move it with my fingers around and around that way I didn't drop it on the floor <laughs> the sink kept it in place <laughs> where there's a will there's a way <laughs> after you get it kneaded in the bowl you divide it into three then I get my old pans out. I've used these pans all the years that I've made bread, and that's 40 years, but I don't wash them every time. I wipe them out, that way they don't stick. And, but you try to get as much in each one of them, the same amount in each one of them. And then you knead them again, one at a time. Then I put them in, each one of them in the, in the oven again, the same way. Then. We leave them there until around 3.30 in the afternoon. They're usually up toward the top or a little over the top. When it comes time to bake it, I take the, each one of them out of the oven and preheat it to 350. And when I get through, uh, get it up to 350, I put them back in there. I put one at the back this way and two toward this way. And uh, time it for 25 minutes and it come, comes out perfect and I can, I can smell it and know it's about done and I haven't even looked at the timer. <laughs> oh, 
I hadn't thought about counting. But you think about every 10 to 14 days, 40 years, you can kind of figure it out. <laughs> a lot of love goes into that bread. It may be Mimi bread, but I think it's love bread. Bread's ready, come get it. 